Hello and welcome to footballfan.zone, the website that gives you insight from the inside. Today we're discussing racism, we're kicking out, Paul Mortimer. Thanks for joining us. Um, you're a former player, you now work for Kick It Out, you're the professional players engagement manager. Give us a little bit of detail to your background. Um, part of my role is, I mean, it, it actually does what it says, I'm, I'm supposed to engage with the players. So, um, I suppose about two years ago there was a situation where the players refused to wear the Kick It Out shirts because they thought that, that Kick It Out didn't uh, back the black players in situations that, that, ar uh, uh, that arose. Now, what we learned was that a lot of players didn't actually know what Kick It Out was didn't know who we were or how we could help players um, with the, in, in educating them um, to deal with the situations that arise. So out of that situation was born my job, which was to actually just reintroduce players up and down the country uh, uh, to kick it out to what we do, to how we can assist the players um, in educating the players, actually just giving them the confidence to be able to, to stand up to, to things uh, of a discriminatory uh, nature that, that occur, and they are occurring. Um, and it's just important that players know what to do about it, recognising it, uh, responding to it and, and, and reporting it properly. How big an issue is this in football? It's, it's there. It's not, it's not in your face. It's somewhat covert in nature, you know, and it's quite casual in the way that it's, it's used. You know, it's, it's, it's somewhat jocular. People will make jokes and, and the victims, because people on the receiving end of this are victims, find it very difficult to, to complain because often the highlight is then on them, they're too sensitive or they've got to be tougher or you know it's not a big deal, it's only a joke and things like that. And what they've got to realise is is the messages that are sent to victims from from the perpetrators. It's not a healthy one. And what we try to do again is 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 educate players so that they can the end game for me is for players to be able to recognise what's happened and be able to stop people in their tracks and say, look, I, I don't accept that and this is why. And there's been some high profile ca cases, but yeah. I'm going to talk about those in a second, but how far down the, 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 the pyramid, if you like, does this go? To youth team football, to, to, to academy football? Well, let me explain. Um, you know, you, you talk about, let's say, uh, Suarez, Evra and all of those. Um, there were children in schools mimicking stuff like that. So it goes that low. I mean, these are their idols. So they will copy everything that players do. And, and part of our education of players is, is for them to understand that they have a responsibility to conduct themselves correctly because they are being watched and mimicked and copied by young kids up and down the country. Now you mentioned Suarez and Ever, of course JT is another one of those. Yeah. Um, what was you, were you involved directly with those cases? No, 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 no. I wasn't, I, I was working for another uh, anti-racist organisation at the time. And, and what we did was we went into school, show racism, and come into schools and educated uh, 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 school children from sort of year five upwards and I say the scary thing that the, the, the scary thing was that they were on point they actually knew what was going on 10 year old kids knew exactly what was going on and asked really insightful questions as to you know why were people punished a certain way what was wrong with the words that were used and so they they're on point they understand it these kids and that's why we can't stress enough to the players that it's important that they do conduct themselves correctly are you surprised when you hear of incidents such as the Evra, Suarez, JT situation? Um, yes, a little bit, um, but I'm not 100% shocked because these things have not really gone away. Um, I think it's improved, there's no dispute in that. It has improved, but but there is still that undercurrent you know, that's, that's still around. And, and that's why it's important that players understand you know, and have the confidence to be able to stand up against it. You know, some people use words and, and you know, they don't really know what they mean. And, and it's important that players understand that, that they're people first and these people have to respect that certain vocabulary, certain terminology, certain ways of thinking are, are um, I suppose, a prop offensive to other people and they need to respect that. Now, the Malky Mackay situation yeah. has, it, it, it seems to have snowballed. There seems to be all sorts of other accusations that come out almost on a by daily mm. basis. When that came to light, what was your first reaction? As a, as a, as a black man, as opposed to someone working for Kick It Out? Um, I was disappointed, but again, I wasn't hugely surprised. I mean, this, this culture of, of, of sort of, you know, message sending and, and email sending and things like that, it makes it really difficult to help combat and stamp out discrimination because it's all somewhat covert in nature. 
And so what that means is you really don't know what people are, are, are like because the real them sometimes is hidden behind these texts and, and, and emails and things like that. So it's very difficult to really be able to get a handle on what people are thinking, you know, genuinely thinking. I know it's come to light now, but is it less offensive because it's a private text? I mean, if we all went through one another's phones, there are things that we wouldn't want our mates, perhaps even our partners, to want to see. Oh, oh, but, oh that but, now. but it, 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 tell us about because they were private texts. Does that does that change it? Um, well, like you just said, Jason, if if everyone's private te texts were were highlighted everywhere <laughs> across the board, people would be sweating a little bit. The problem that you have with these is they're not private anymore. And I think what we've got to start realising is virtually nothing's private. And once it comes into the public do domain, then perceptions and opinions come into it. And, and in this case, you know, the, the vocabulary you used probably touched every protected characteristic that, that they could. And it offended a lot of people. And I mean, the good thing about it is that uh, um, he has apologised. And, and that's the start. The start of, I suppose, the healing process and the learning process is that, that someone accepts responsibility for it. Because until that happens, you're never going to get, you're never going to be able to assist people in, in learning. Now, Kick It Out slogan is tackling racism and discrimination. Yes. Now, as you just highlighted there, it wasn't just um, a racist, there was no. homophobic, anti-Semitism, sexist comments yeah. in and amongst these texts yeah. between Malky and... and uh, Ian Moody yeah. at the time. We don't know which way it went. I think it's important no. we mentioned it at this particular Definitely. time. But as you said there, there's an awful lot of people that's been offended. How do you tackle those issues away from just racism? Again, I mean, with us, we, we take everyone, you know, uh, uh, on its merits. So so what we probably do, what we're doing now is, again, we're educating. The most important way of tackling them is, is to educate people, to understand that not just racism, discrimination on the whole, that kind of discriminatory language is unacceptable. It offends people. It offended so many people. Um, and I think if people understand that, you know, it was discussed as banter, let's say. And, and banter is a, is, is a really broad term used to describe everything. One thing I will tell you is, I haven't met a victim of banter that's held their hand up and said, oh, it's really funny, it's just banter. Because that offends them. And, and the thing about when people talk about banter sometimes, you know, that's the perpetrators. It's never, it's never really the victims. And that, that tells you something about their understanding of, of what the words really mean and the effect that they have on, on, on victims. Because we have to remember, these people are on the receiving end are victims. What do you make of the statement that come out from the LMA? I think the LMA, um, quite rightly, should back their union member. Um, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm virtually sure they, they don't really condone, you know, the, the, the tone and the vocabulary used in the communications. I'm virtually sure of that. I mean, what that, uh, um, I suppose, what, what that whole message uh, that sent to me was that education is needed. Because to use, like I said, to use the term banter was, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a very dated, that term, and it's not something that, and it, it gives a, a sort of jocular ter tone to it. And, and it's not a joke. Um, and, it, and it belittles a little bit, and it's not belittling. It's, this is a, a serious, these are serious allegations. Um, and the way it's been dealt with, the fallout from it all shows that authorities, managers, because I've listened to managers come out and defend Malcolm McClay, uh, uh, players, everyone needs to be educated on, on discrimination and understanding the effect that the vocabulary has. Once these comments have come to light and accusations are flying, can you then become non-racist? Can, can, can education change the, the minds of people? Well, look at How do you go way. about it? Well, look at it this way. Um, racism is a pattern of behaviour. So, and every single person is capable of racist behaviour. That doesn't necessarily make them a racist. It makes them capable of racist behaviour because it is a pattern of behaviour. Thoughts, feelings, actions. That's how it does. It's a pattern of behaviour. And what you can do is educate people. Now, if, if you were to say something, we'd go through training, you'd be educated. Now, the next time you say it, you're choosing because there isn't an ignorant part of it. You're doing it for a reason. Uh, and that's, that's where the choice, you know, there becomes a choice. Education is the key. And what we want to try and do is be proactive. Um, at Kick It Out, we, we do scholars training with the Football League uh, scholars. And we go in and funny enough, we talk about banter, about the use of the word and what it means and how dangerous it is. And 
the, like I said, the disappointing thing for me is you'll go into a club and you'll teach these under 18s about banter and about why it's unacceptable, and then up above, people are using the term banter like it's okay. Now, the message that sends to these young kids is not a positive one, and that's where the education must come in from the top, as well as the down, uh, the, 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 the bottom up, it must be from the top down. In world football, I think we are a leading light where this is where, where this is an issue. Mm. You go across Europe, in particular places such as Italy, yeah. um, where it is inherently there uh, on the terraces, and it's something that you would have experienced mm -hmm. as a, a player back in the in the eighties when yeah. when you first started. We've come a long way. How how much further we've we got to go? Um, I, I would say we're a work in progress. And like you said, Jason, you're right. I think I actually think we lead the way in Europe. We can be proud of the work we've done, you know, when, when you look out into Europe, because it seems to be an acceptable norm in some parts of, 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 of Europe. And some parts of Europe are where we were in the 70s. Um, we've come a long way. And, and I think what's changed it is, you know, if you look at a football stadium now, the cross section of fans is culturally diverse. There are families there. There are a lot of women that come to the games, um, a lot of, you know, people from other countries. So many different skin colours. Um, if you look on the pitch, Prominent players are foreign or black or of different faiths. So what tends to happen is fans start to police themselves because they realise that it's unacceptable. Um, clubs are doing so much more work in, in I suppose, in raising awareness, in, in teaching their, their, their own fans, in, in setting the trend amongst their clubs that, you know, diversity and... and, and uh, equality is the way to go and you know combating things the uh, discrimination and, 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 and all aspects of discrimination so we do a lot of work but that doesn't mean that it's ever uh, completed it is a work in progress and this week this weekend's issues tell you that we've still got a lot of work to do